Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show y'all how I made this style of pendant. I'm not certain yet if I'm going to be adding the chainmail bezel and doing the epoxy back. That might be a, um, a second tutorial or I may, yeah, we'll see how things go. But just kind of building the structure of a kind of steampunky gemstone cabochon that you can then set in chainmail or wire wrap or incorporate into your beadwork or leatherworking or more polymer clay pieces just <laughs> all sorts of different stuff the possibilities are endless here i am using sculpey primo i find it's a very good clay for jewelry um very affordable very easy to work with it's not particularly hard on the hands um and it doesn't break a whole lot like the original Sculpey I do have some problems with it being like brittle or like cracking or being very easy to break if it's in thinner pieces but with the Primo Sculpey as well as Kato and Fimo are other brands that work really well um, and if I use those three clays together I just bake them at the lowest common denominator, which I think is the Sculpey at um, 275. Oh, I've been doing it at 15 minutes per quarter inch, but I guess it's 30 minutes. It's good to read the instructions, you guys. But, um, and I would just bake it for longer at the lower temperature. Um, I can usually tell whenever my clay is baked thoroughly, by, and I, I know I'm dumping a lot of information right here at the beginning, but I want to make sure I get these things out before we start crafting, and then I might lose my train of thought. Um, whenever you take your clay out of the oven, it may, whenever it's warm, it'll still be quite flexible. And I've never had my polymer clay get perfectly, I mean, unless it's like a thick piece like this, I've never had it get perfectly, perfectly hard if it's like a thinner piece. So this is this is pretty good you'll want to make sure that like you can test on the back side that it's not leaving like a fingernail imprint um but it's basic if you're worried that it might not be baked all the way through for any reason whether your oven isn't heating properly or something like that i just put it back in for another 15 to 30 minutes at um the lowest common temperature or sometimes i will even put my clay in at like 260 degrees fahrenheit and bake it for like 45 to 60 minutes um, just to make sure I'd rather do it low and slow um, and you can always do some sample pieces and bake them and then purposefully break them to see is it baked in the middle like did it heat through all the way good tips I think or like just good things to do in general uh, are to Let's see as soon as I start crafting my brain breaks um, <laughs> are to preheat your oven first and then put your clay in because a lot of ovens will spike the temperature right from the beginning to get the whole oven up to temp and then it'll balance out and so especially if you're working with lighter colors you don't want to be scorching your clay so now that I have just dumped a ton of information on you I hope that that was helpful <laughs> I am going to start slicing off of my block of this is one of those eight ounce bricks of Primo Sculpey in just black. And I'm going to be using this as the base. There will be a link to, links to all the different tools and materials down in the video description below. And off to the side here, I am running through my pasta machine. Let me actually get the camera flipped around so you can see. This is my pasta mach machine. There are many like it, but this one is mine. And I'm just going to take these slices of clay that we've made. I try to slice around a quarter of an inch thick. Um, I try to not cram anything thicker than that through the machine just because it makes it last a little longer if you take care of it. And I'm just passing things through on the thickest setting. You can see I'm folding it and feeding it through fold first so we don't incorporate bubbles. And I'm going to go ahead and get all of this kind of passed through the machine. And that's all the black that I'll have cut uh, is getting passed through. There we go. Oh. And sometimes you might incorporate some cat hair or dog hair or something. That's okay. Just pick the pick the fur out of it and keep oh gosh, there's just a lot of fur, isn't there? <laughs> 
and then I'll start splicing multiple slices together just like this it's very easy to make things seem complicated I think sometimes and polymer clay can be but it doesn't have to be complicated you just smush the clay you got this <laughs> the reason we're passing this through and conditioning it is it's making sure especially if your polymer clay has been on the shelf for a while which I have never had polymer clay go bad like it doesn't really expire it just might need some extra conditioning there's also um, liquid polymer clay softener that you can add to your clay um, to kind of put some of those oils and stuff back in there or compounds. I'm not a chemist or a scientist. I just smush stuff. So um, I'm not exactly certain. You know, I've got some sitting around here somewhere, I'm sure. But you can just add like a very small amount and it will um, revitalize crumbly clay. And so this would be a good time to incorporate that. If we needed to, we could be blending colors, but really this is just kneading the dough so that we can then make our beautiful creations with it. If, you're, if my clay starts to get really wide and I'm not worried about keeping colors, you know, like doing a Skinner blend or something, I'll just turn it and feed it through from the side. And that is looking, I know whenever my clay is conditioned well, because I can fold it and mark, like, secure the crease and I don't have any cracking like that's a very good sign there we go okay moving the camera back on over okay so here I have some silver some bronze and our black and this is a mix of antique gold um do I have a brick of it no I don't I used up the last of it it's Oh, it's right here. Um, it's this antique gold color mixed with um, like two parts black, one part gold. And it's just enough to give us that really nice little shimmer. And I'm actually going to be adding in some black to each of these colors that we're using. So and I'm just eyeballing it. So like one part black to two parts, parts, <laughs> two parts bronze. And I'm going to feed that through. And I'm also going to show you guys, um, if you don't have a polymer clay, like a pasta machine, we could fold and feed it through that way, or you can do the old fold and roll, which is, I roll with my hands, fold it, roll it, fold it, roll it. This is a great way also of conditioning your clay. Now you can ro use like a roller like this one here or something similar to, you can see it's starting to marble, to roll your clay out to uniform thicknesses. But um, pasta machines over the past decade of, for me working with polymer clay, have become so much more affordable, so much more accessible. Um, it's They really are a very good investment um, if you are working with polymer clay so they it's actually let's roll this through because we can get just some really cool oh my gosh you guys absolutely love that oh um fortunately the layer I was gonna do with this one oof, I was gonna leave um coppery tone like this was gonna be for this layer and so we wouldn't really be able to show off that effect. But this is a really cool effect. And I absolutely love the way that it looks. And I'm a little tempted to use it as the base layer. But this is our cabochon that we're using today. <sighs> I just wanted the little bit of a copper as an accent. So just taking a screenshot of it in my mind. It's so pretty. And we're going to keep conditioning it. Because this is a great way to get like faux wood grains as well it's just that fold and roll i mean it's kind of you know not specifically related to the project that we're doing immediately at hand but it's good information to know might come in really handy and just because i'm doing my project this way you can do your project any way that you like so if my way is not your favorite way do it your favorite way use your favorite color schemes <laughs> so is full permission for me to you not that you need it but just in case you like having permission from someone um 
Go hog wild. Worst case scenario, you hate it and you can like repaint it. Uh, after it's been baked, you can always paint over these different polymer clay colors with like acrylic paint. Um, you could bury it in the backyard and salt the bones. Like there's a lot of different options. So you can see that just darkened it down a little from, that's the original bronze color. And that's it mixed, two parts bronze, one part black. It just neutralizes things a little bit. And now, this is maybe equal portions, silver and black. And I'm just going to smush these together a little bit. It's a lot of fun, but it can be a little exhausting. <laughs> And you can see that's really starting to get a nice blend there. And so I'm now going to take this and feed it through the machine. Oh yeah, that looks neat. <laughs> and I'm just going to fold and roll a few more times. So pretty. I'm going to leave it like this now. And the... I'm going to start with the base of our piece. And I'm just laying this down on our um, work surface. I'm searching for the tile oops, that I had for baking this on because I was going to try to build it on the tile, but I can't find it. So um, I'll go, I'll go look for it somewhere. <laughs> we'll figure it out. So I'm going to pick which side I want to be the front of my clay. And I'm positioning this right here, and I'm doing this two layers thick, just because I really want a nice, thick, substantial um, pendant. Well, now I've lost my cutter as well. There it is. Okay. <laughs> and I'm just going to come in here, centering my cutter on wherever I like the look of, and smush. And that's so much easier than cutting out two separate pieces and trying to stack them on top of each other. So I've removed that one pretty cleanly and I removed our black pretty cleanly. So I'm going to recondition it or uh, just reshape it basically into a flat sheet again. And you can see it's a little weird, but after a couple of roll throughs, you lose that weird looking, um, folds and bumps and dimples and it's just very nice whenever I need some black clay it's right there already conditioned for me and I'm just going to drape this across there and I'm going to come in and the lifting up this is going to be the base that we build the rest of our uh, pendant on or the rest of our cabochon so I am going to go and find that tile it's got to be somewhere I have found it. This is just a very inexpensive glazed tile from the hardware store. Um, I like the glazed as opposed to the unglazed or anything with texture on it because whenever it starts to get nice and gross from like painting stuff on it or anything like that, I can just come through with a razor blade and clean that up good as new again. So, and you can see all that little bit of scuzz we scraped off of there, right into the bin, and nice and clean. And I think I got this for like 40 or 60 cents, like that, that's hard to beat you guys. And you can build your project on it and then move it directly into your oven. I use, um, depending on the size of the project, either an electric toaster oven or my home oven that is a gas oven. Um, there's a lot of folks who talk about and ask about the safety and like risks about polymer clay fumes. Do your own research and determine for yourself. In a perfect world, we would all have an oven that's separate outside of our homes, perfectly vented just for polymer clay. But I've found for the most part, um, you know, do have it vented if you can and just try to not burn it like it's whenever you're burning it that you're really making a lot of those noxious fumes from the polymer clay but uh 
you do you do your research so again i am not a scientist i'm not a chemist i'm not a doctor i am just a crafter who smooshes things i'm coming through here now with this just ball stylus and i'm just kind of lightly tapping to give a nice hammered look to the base of our piece And then from here, we can actually start being a little bit more random or intentional with our dotting placement. And we can start being a little bit firmer. I like to travel in circles as opposed to rows whenever I'm dotting because I feel like it gives me a little bit more of a natural look, you know, like a little less um, grid-like. And I am going to texture the whole surface, including the sides. So I think I will be setting this piece in chain mail, so I'm probably not going to do too much texturing on the side because it's just going to get covered, but you'll have your intentions for your pieces. So if you're doing beadwork or anything like that, um, actually we may be able to, we could go through y'all and use like a craft knife and add some little notches all the way around of this and make it look, um, like make it toothed and then we could actually use it as the base for fractal wrapping which if you're into wire wrapping um and you haven't checked out that tutorial of ours you can see uh you can search our fractal wrap f-r-a-c-t-a-l on our youtube channel and um it'll come up but it's a lot a lot of fun i don't have an example immediately on hand otherwise i'd show you but uh, it is good fun and pretty easy, pretty beginner friendly. Okay, so there we have our nice hammered texture on the whole piece. I'm gonna zoom back out for you now. And I just have this um, pop holder here so that whenever I set it down, it's not an ungodly loud noise. Um, I am going to smush this up and pass it through the pasta machine. I love that. Playing with clay is so much fun. <sighs> okay, hydration. Now, some shameless self promotion. We do sell cabochons like this one here on our website, backtoearthcreations.com. And we also send out gemstone in our bigger kits but also our handmade fused glass cabochons in all of our kits for our craft along club which we sell on our website and also have available with our subscription service that's on our website as well so just throwing that out there for those of y'all who might be enjoying this and wanting to get your hands on some rocks now we could use this one here this guy's really pretty hmm <clears throat> but he's got a big old chip in him which is perfect for a project like this I don't know I feel like this one is truly exceptional look at those purples and stuff I'm gonna use this one so we'll be starting now with I'm gonna set this off to the side but I'm going to want to do a little bit of a bezel around our stone here it can be very helpful if you already have like some clay cutters that are the right shape for your stone. Just lining it up. Sorry, I realize I put my head in the way, but it just works out perfect that this cutter is like so close to the size of the stone. Like you can see there, that's not a huge difference, which I love because it makes a perfect little sized border around what we're doing but cutters like that are not necessary at all you could just use 
a little craft knife or whatever you have on hand. And so I peeled this up off my work surface, cleaning up some of that clay. And now we're going to come in here and I'm going to place this centered up on our clay like that. And I'm going to start just pushing this around. Coming around that edge, up and over, just rounding it a bit with my fingers. Now you could secure this even more with like liquid polymer clay, but I find that that kind of oozes over the edges. Um, but if after you bake this, you find you're having trouble, I'm just going to pinch off some of the excess there off of that tip. But if you're finding you're having trouble getting your stones to stay put, um, you could make the clay bezel, bake it, and if it pops out, just use some super glue. It holds fantastically. But my hope here is by training just a little bit of that polymer clay up and around, using my finger almost the way I would a bezel roller in metal smithing, to just encourage that clay. And then don't be afraid to use tools too. There's only so much we can do with our, so only so much I can do with my clumsy neat hands. So sometimes I have to get my tools out and it really helps kind of tidy everything up. We can come through here if we want it super tidy and just kind of slice off any excess that is wandering out of frame. Sorry, guys. In fact, to keep myself from doing that again, maybe we can scooch down like that. There we go. But yeah, we can just use the straight edge of a cutting tool to remove some of that excess clay before rounding it off again. And that gives, I think, a much tidier effect. You could also always start sanding this down a little bit after baking. But I hate sanding stuff. So the more cleanup work I can do now, the better off for future Vaughn. And I'm just gonna tidy up our work a little bit more. That's looking good. And now I'm going to use a tool called a wire brush. You can kind of see has, well, a wire brush for the head. And I'm just gonna come through and texture this. Kind of just tapping rotating around. I, I've worked with this clay quite a bit, so right, like, not just in general, but like right now, this clay in, in particular is quite warm and sticky, which is great news for what we have up next. <laughs> so, but if you're feeling like that's happening and it's detrimental to what you're trying to do, set the piece down and come back to it a little bit later. If it's just a hot day out or you're very warm handed like I am, um, Maybe pop the whole piece into the uh, fridge or freezer for a little while. It won't it won't hurt the clay. It'll just help it stiffen up. There we go. So now we have some really neat blurriness happening. You can see we've got some really nice little texture happening around there. And you can kind of even it out a little bit around the face of the stone go. And now from here, I'm just going to set that back down. I have on hand some different Prolex pigments. Here we have a Sunset Gold that I really like. That's actually the color that I used on this one, which is very orangey gold. Maybe we'll go with something different today, like this one here that is a also Sunset Gold. Okay. <laughs> um, rummage, rummage, rummage. 
maybe we have something Ooh, we have a brilliant gold that sounds fun a little too yellow for my taste though so poking 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 rummaging okay well here i have what we were looking for the silver so we're going to be using some silver. We are going to be using some, I thought we had like an antique bronze. That'd have been cool. Like super bronze, whatever the heck that means. What's this? Well, that says sunset gold. What do you even look like? Oh yeah, that's perfect. Okay. It, just, it looks very brown from the outside. So it's like, what even is that? <laughs> um, so we have that, we have that, and then let's do, we have super copper. Perfect. So those are the three colors that I'm going to be using today. I like it whenever the uh, clay is very, very sticky like this because it's perfect for grabbing onto just a little bit of mica powder. Oops. And the least favorite part about having long fingernails is it really... Uh, sometimes grabs a little too much, like pokes the clay. So I'm just coming through now. Let me zoom back in. And burnishing this very shiny Perlex pigment. If I were using a brush and stirring it up, I'd be way more concerned right at this moment. I don't know if y'all can hear the vent fan that I have going, but I do have a fan that's pulling fumes and dust that away. Um, but use your respirator, you know, we only get the one set of lungs for the most part. But I'm not doing a whole lot of stirring of the pigment, it's all very like blunt. But again, and the only reason I'm not using my respirator too is because I am speaking to you guys and I want to be, I want you to be able to hear me. But if it were just me crafting alone, I'd be using my respirator. There we go. So you can kind of see it adds just a little bit more of a high shine to it. And so we've done that part. And then I'd also like to do this base down here, which we're going to be using our sunset gold. Which I'm going to use a different finger so I don't cross contaminate. And I just touch my finger into it, burnish it into the lid of the little, what would you even call that? The little pot, I guess. And then just gently rubbing over the surface. And you could definitely come through and we may actually do that and be like little touches of silver here little touches of gold there so you don't have to have just segmented layers you could have it you know express yourself have it be as wonky and weird or very sophisticated or sophisticated and weird <laughs> you know it's a no one can make your artwork as good as you can so do what calls to you like I see all kinds of like marketing promotional stuff being like how to stand out in a saturated market best way to stand out in any market as a jewelry designer as an artisan as an individual doing anything is to just be yourself nobody can do that better than you there we go and again it just adds a little bit of color up on top and I love it. Something that looks wicked cool actually is if you do the antique bronze with a little bit of like a bright turquoise. Um, it makes it look like aged copper. It's very cool. Okay, so now I've rubbed that onto my pants as, a, as the crafter do. Um, and I'm going to take our silver piece and I'm going to center it onto this little shield shape. And the prolex isn't really going, it's not going to get in the way of adhesion or anything like that. 
gosh, that is such a pretty lab, you guys. And I'm going to take it, and I'm just going to, in the middle here, and I'm going to go boop and smush it in. So, smush. Perfect. Now is a fun part. We are going to go through with some of these different gear components that we have. Let me readjust the camera for you guys. I hope this is a slightly better camera angle for y'all. But we are going to come through with some of these enameled alloy gears that are linked down in the video description. And I've got some old um, jewelry cutters here, like wire cutters. They're not fancy. They do just pinch things. They aren't like flush cutters or anything like that. And I'm just going to go like this. Wear your eye protection. <laughs> um, and I'm going to come through. And I don't want to do it straight across. I want to do it a little weird. Why are there hairs everywhere? I'm just going to come in and snip. So now we have, and if you want, you could like file them and stuff, but they're really, they're embedding into the clay, so I'm not super worried about it. If we were not wire wrapping, or if we were not setting this in chain mail, you could come through and like stick, well it's gone forever now, you could stick stuff into the um, edge if you wanted, but I'm just going to come in here and smush that down and in. And then press it against the clay. And it's very subtle, especially when you do same color on same color, but sometimes that's nice. Sometimes you just want a slight contrast in texture. We have this guy here that I think looks really neat. So I'm going to take him and I'm going to go like this and I'm going to go like bloop. Just smushing that in. And then pressing. And you, we could have laid all this stuff down first, but I am kind of using it to shift the, if I'm catching any of the silver clay, it's kind of like pushing it into the clay below it. So making the, our pendant monolithic. Just a little bit, maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> so now I've got this one here, which I really love the texture on some of these gears. I'm going to take this one and I'm just going to come in here from the side, like that little pop of silver. Oop. There we go. And then, ooh, this one's got some nice texture. He's got like a whole bolt sticking out there from the center. So, ooh, and we can actually make the little gears interlocked oh that brings me immense joy <laughs> i love that see all the little gears ah okay and now from here i kind of need more silver definitely need more silver i'm gonna i'll be back gotta rummage okay so i found this is a silly little gear with like a heart in the center of it which isn't really what i'm going for but we can take it and smush it in significantly to where nobody would even know that it was a heart to start with. It just looks like kind of a weird little thing poking out. And then from here we can take this coppery one. You know, I don't think I like it there actually now that I have it placed. It's a very thick silver when in comparison to so you can just pull it out. When in comparison to the other gears, it was very thick metal. So I don't think I'm going to use that piece, but hmm, I would use that segment of it. So plans are there to be deviated from and changed, you guys. Don't feel like, oh no, that idea I had didn't work. Like, that's not failure. That's, well, <laughs> pinged away from me though so that's good it's not failure to change your mind it's not you know don't don't take things like that personally if you can help it just let it be what it is and keep on crafting okay so I've tucked that in I'm just using the end of the paintbrush here to uh, kind of actually think I'm gonna hide it just a little bit more I just want a hint of the metal poking out, protruding. There we go. 
that's what I'm looking for. Very cool. You know, sometimes you maybe need to just smush that. Smush it back in. And I have one of these cute little gears here that I'm going to tuck into right there. Now you could also, you could just take some gear stamps if you don't have these metal components and like stamp the back of it and like then whenever you burnish the the Perlex pigment onto it, um, I really wish my camera would just focus, like help me. <laughs> Maybe if we, that's the wrong way, brighten it up quite a bit, it'll stop losing its mind. Um, that way, whenever you burnish it with the Prolex pigment, it will make those gear impressions pop and look, you know, like there's more gears there. So you don't have to, I'm teaching hopefully just concepts and like design ideas. So do what you can do with what you have on hand more than anything, because that's going to help, you know, your bead collection or craft stash may look completely different from mine. So that was just a little bead cap actually that I just knocked in there um so what you have available to you and your own creativity of what to do with it is going to shape your pieces just as much as your own creativity so that can be really fun to experiment with now this one I am going to cut perfectly in half and I'm going to take this side and I'm going to layer it around the silver we had done So I'm just going to poke and smush. There we are. I really like that. <laughs> so now, just zooming out a little bit, setting that off to the side. Oops, super durable, thank goodness. <laughs> I'm going to remove the cat hair from our clay. I'm going to pass this through the machine and I'm going to pass it through vertically because I would really like, well that just got weird didn't it? It still works. I'm going to trim with my tissue blade to make a perfect straight edge. I'm very bad about making even snakes in my polymer clay so this is my kind of workaround for that so I'm just gonna slice that off so that's kind of an even snake actually I'm gonna do it a little bit differently than what we did on this one to make this nice like rope um, I rolled out and I'll demonstrate but this one it came out so perfect I'm gonna use it for something else um, this is the piece I need Please pardon me while I juggle my clay. So, you can get a couple of different effects, and I like to cut just a thin piece and then round the sides in, like make it from being a square length to being round. You can also use, they have some different like extruders and stuff on the market. But now it's round, and we can take this. Yeah, I may end up just using an extruder in this feature for this because I have such a hard time getting even snakes. But or I could practice more. But I want results now. <laughs> Fold it in half like this, and then I'm gonna be pressing, like touching, like this, and then rolling. So I'm touching and then rolling. And it really helps me to get a nice, relatively consistent result. And then I like to just press set it a little bit. Like, so I've rolled and then I'm going to press with my fingertips. And that just helps the polymer clay to stay put where you've put it. So you could leave it twisted like this. Or you could then roll it in just a little bit. You don't want to be making full contact entirely again, but you can just twist it in a little bit like that. And then 
maybe twist it a little bit harder but with the squared edges if we just take it and twist like this I'm actually gonna just twist and set a little at a time let me zoom in hopefully that'll help you to see what's going on here I am just twisting being very careful to not blunt the sharp edges of like how squared this is that's how, that's what I really like about it is I love how squared off this is And also, since it's one of those um, kind of metallic clays, it has almost a two-tone effect going on. Because you can see on this piece here, the difference between, like, I don't know, it just it hits the light different. So it gives it a very, a little bit of a, I think it's called a mica shift in the polymer clay books. So yeah. That is pretty neat, and that is what we are going to use around our focal point here, which we can then, okay, I'm trying to not make loud noises, but... <laughs> So from here, I'm going to take this and I'm going to use our X-Acto knife to cut along the pattern. So you see how I've sliced there kind of diagonally. And so it makes it look like it finished on purpose. And so I'm going to take this and I'm just going to set it very gently for now. You can always come back later and start really smushing stuff like crazy. Um, but just gently setting it around the perimeter of our piece. I think this gives it a really nice sort of filigree effect. And we can um, determine the amount of the twist here at the very end to see how would this lay and interact best with the cut that we have going on. And so I think I'm going to cut this one just right there, using the gear behind it actually as a little bit of a cutting board. Keep. There we go. And so I'm going to kind of point that down, and then I'm going to bring this cut bit around like that, and try to make it look seamless hopefully i really need to get a different color tile because it's this white tile i think is throwing off the color balance of my camera which is just my cell phone by the way like super high tech um and also the fact that i've got some lighting going on yeah. thank you guys in advance for your patience with me as i struggle at being a professional youtuber <laughs> It's like, dude, I just work here. I don't know how any of this crap actually works. I just want to smoosh clay. <laughs> so there is that. And now you may decide that this is the perfect stopping point for your piece, but I am going to try to get a little bit of highlights going on there. You can also use um, makeup applicator brushes are perfect for stuff like this. Might offer you a little bit more control. I'm just going to come through just catching the high oop I got some on the silver uh, just catching the high surfaces of that oop yeah it's really hard to not get it on the silver for me at least which is fine I'm not that worried about it you can also always come through and just apply more silver the Perlex um, pigments do layer well over each other though you have to be careful because sometimes it will start to just blend I'm not too upset about that. We might add some little copper fading here on the edges. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep doing that. I think that makes a really cool effect, actually. There we are. 
And so that is how this is looking. And what we would do now is now that we have caught the highlights of that twist, now I don't mind nearly as much coming through and smushing this in just a little bit more to where um, it's making very, very solid contact with the clay underneath it. Um, because even though I'm softening the sharp, the lines that had been sharp, um, it is that high point is still defined by the pearl X. So that line's still there. Very neat stuff. So I'm going to pop this into a preheated oven that's at 275 for 30 minutes. And then I'll meet you guys back here for the next step. Okay guys, we have pulled this out of the oven and it has cooled completely. And so I'm just gonna get under there and lift it off and you can see we've got a nice some shiny bits on the back but that is how our cabs looking and we could set this in chain mail we could wire wrap it we could um take like oh you know here's an idea oh okay <laughs> okay i didn't drop it <laughs> oh. oh give me a sec i scared the crap out of me okay um, oh, the cat's ringing the bell. I gotta go let the cat out. I'll be right back. Okay, let the cat out. So, I'm going to make this a little bit differently. So, again, if you guys are interested, let me know and we can do a tutorial. I'm, I have other ones showing how to set just any old cab in chain mail. And then filling it in the back with the DevCon two-part five-minute epoxy. The cow, I mean, and I made this whole piece in a live stream. I was just kind of recreating it for those of y'all who um, who don't watch my live streams, basically. Um, but let's see how we can, through the use of gears, like this one here, we could have this hanging, like we could set that up at the top, and then have that be what our cord joins to, or let's go a rummaging. And I like these ones with the short little gear teeth. So I'm gonna see if I can't rummage up another one of those. Oh, there's two in the copper. I really like that. That might be a nice change of pace. We've got some in a really bright gold. I'm not digging that so much personally. We've got some in antique copper. Oh, I know what'll make the internet mad. I'll just use completely different metal colors. I always get like a hateful remark from somebody who's like, ah, why, why are you like this? As gravity throw things at me. Throws things. Okay, so. Gonna unstick this stuff from the sticking. And... I'm going to kind of test and see which I like better. I don't think I'm going to use the bright and shiny copper. And I don't think I'm going to do the one at each. I can feel some of y'all, your eyes twitching at me using one of each. You could if you wanted to get super weird with it. Just have them not match at all entirely. So you do you. But the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to begin with actually putting some hash marks into the back here. It got pretty shiny. Shiny. It got pretty shiny um, sitting there on that tile. So I'm just coming through and I'm doing some cross hatching. Be mindful of your fingers. And this is going to give us something for our clay to grip to. Polymer clay is pretty good about binding to itself, but I just want to be super duper certain. You could also do a very, very rough sand of this, like use some super rough grit sandpaper. But you can see that's given us some nice texture for this to hold on to. Like you could even really kind of get in there. Yeah, that'll be plenty good, I think. 
there we are and so we could use I think I'm just gonna do more of what we did have um, that kind of color and I'm going to use the same cutter we were using, which this was just a round cutter that um, I bent with some flat nose pliers to be in the shape. And again, the shape doesn't nearly matter so much as what the techniques and the applications of them. Um, so you could do this with any shapes and any colors of clay and all that jazz. And if you wanted, you could use just a little bit of liquid polymer clay. This isn't a completely, like, this is silver. It'll be fine. <laughs> but you can just take that and could, with your finger or something, just rub this all around. And this is going to give us a really nice adhesion. Got a bit of shop towel here that I'm going to use to clean my finger up. And so now from here we can place our gears. You could also just use jump rings as well. Eee. And I am just going to take this and start shaping this down and over our gears. And I'm also going to take it and I'm shaping it up and over the side just a little bit, very similarly to how we did whenever we were embedding the cabochon. Which, I know I said this earlier, but shameless self-promotion. We sell cabochons on our website, backtoearthcreations.com. So, <laughs> we do new shop updates every, what day is it? Monday. We do shop updates every Monday. So, if you guys like making jewelry and want to use some curated cabochons, as well as some handmade fused glass, or even to just pop by and see some flashy rock prawn, check out our Monday shop update tours. So I am just coming through here and kind of just shaping it around. Like, I wanna make sure that I'm making good contact between the baked clay and our new clay. especially inside this area and we can even go through and kind of tap it a bit with a ball stylus to add some texture I actually think I'm going to texturize this whole backside all around the edges and everything, just getting stuff. Sorry, I'm starting to get into it and lean forward until I hit my head on the tripod that's holding the camera, so. And I'm actually going to use this same shop cloth, or shop towel, to just protect the front of this as I pummel it a bunch. And I think it really adds a nice element of just care into the work that you're doing to decorate up the back. 
And again, I'm trying to not put any pressure on the, um, the ears of the peas, <laughs> kind of, uh, because since, you know, the clay that we're laying on top of it right now is not baked, it will very easily just pull back up. This is a wonderful opportunity, too, to incorporate your maker's mark, which I will be doing that shortly, once I finished all the dapping. I'm going to zoom in and see if that gives you all a little bit of a different view of what's going on. And if you don't have little ball styluses like this, you could roll up a piece of clay on the end of a pencil and bake it, and then use that. Um, you could use the end of a toothbrush, not toothbrush, paintbrush, shoot, toothbrush, I don't know. You could use toothbrush bristles to get some interesting textures and stuff. Like, you know, once you've used it for clay, though, don't, like, go brushing your teeth or anything. <laughs> um, but, like, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have to say that, <laughs> but here we are. Um, once you use these things for polymer clay, you know, go ahead and have them be designated polymer clay tools. But... You can get some really interesting effects with different household items. And I actually think that would be a really interesting video to make, you know, obscure household uphold items as tools. Okay, so now I'm going to place this face down onto our tile. And I would like to do my maker's mark. So I'm going to we do a little R through the randy and we do a little Y through the Yvonne and then we do the year and then if it's a piece that we both worked on, we do a dot next to both of our initials, but this one was just me, so I'm just going to do a dot by the Y. There we are. So that's my little maker mark. Hmm. So now we will put this back into the oven at 275 for another uh, 30 minutes, and then I will meet you guys back here after that to do the finishing touches. Hey y'all, so it is the following day, and I made a little bit of a whoopsie. So pulling this out of the oven, everything looks great, except for when I already picked it up with the oven mitt, I like pinned it like this. And it bent the clay because it was still warm and it popped one of our gears off so what I'm gonna be doing here is showing y'all how to you know because sometimes things happen that you didn't intend or plan and that's okay but it's not the end of the world we've got this figured out or we'll figure it out so I'm going to find which way it was. It seems like it fits in pretty well just like that. Like, So what I'm going to do is use just a touch of glue. I'm going to want something that dries clear. Well, I was going to use this matte. It's a spray-on all-in-one glue and sealer. I used to use a product called PYM. Uh, P -Y -M, it was like preserve your memories. There we go. I put a marble in it to like mix it up, so that's what's going on here. Um, but as far as I'm aware, they're not in production anymore, which just broke my little crafter heart because it was the best stuff uh, there was for just spray sealing polymer clay. And I loved it for like my fairy houses and everything that I liked making. And this stuff. Um, is the best alternative that I've found, the Mod Podge Ultra. Now, you want to be very light-handed with it, just because, you know, 
you don't want to be soaking your pieces in um in glue and then having it like sparse multiple sparse layers seems to be the way to go about it so i'm just going to be using a little bit like that and then i rinse out i just use the same pipette and dirty brush water <laughs> for everything apparently <laughs> There we go, screwing the cap back on. And so just in that little pool of adhesive, I'm just gonna push that back in there. And then we can let that dry fully. And then we can come, I'm gonna be coming back in with just a, let's see, do I have one on hand? It's stained, but it's clean. It's just a little flat bristle brush. And I do want this piece to be rather glossy. So I'm just going to, let's pour some into a pot so I'm not contaminating in the bottle. It really does not take much, y'all. And I'm just going to come through. And the polymer clay can behave a little hydrophobic at first. That's okay. Now we can paint this stuff on. Like this. If we want to go the hard route. Not so much the hard route. Just the um, more work than necessary route. But I do like to get the first base layer done in brushing it on. Just because it helps me to do kind of a very thorough hands-on once over, like check of the piece. Did everything come out the way that I wanted? You know, is anything loose or wobbly? The more we interact with our pieces, I mean, as odd as it sounds, I mean, we did hand make it, so you'd think we'd been interacting well every step of the way, but you never know when you might miss something. And so I don't mind a bit that it's pulling a little bit of the finish around there because the more we have that finish on there, the better of a hold everything's going to have in the long run. Okay. Cleaning our brush out, drying it on the shop towel. And I'll basically just do a couple of layers. Um, I'm going to do the layer like this on the front, let it dry completely, and then flip it over and do it on the back again. You can see already it's giving it a very nice shine. And this stuff does dry quick, y'all, I'm going to say. I'm going to let the excess drip off. And I do prefer this stuff to even the Sculpey glazes and things like that because um, I've had better results with it just drying rapidly without going cloudy on me. Now the only thing I want to watch out for when using this is uh, I don't want to be getting it all over the face of my stone. So we could actually use like liquid latex to cover our stone. We could um, mask it off with masking tape or I've got this piece of paper here. Pardon me while I shake it up. Shake, shake, shake. So let's pretend for a moment like this is dry. I'm actually going to flip it over because I, I don't want to rush this, but yet here I am rushing it. So I'm going to just flip it over and, and so you can see on that first layer of spraying, we don't really get super duper perfect even coverage. Just because, again, the polymer clay itself is so hydrophobic. 
like it is non-porous to the max so now that we've spread it around a bit you can see it's pooling a lot more nicely I think at least okay done rushing it I'm gonna let it dry and I'll meet you guys back here through the magic of editing okay so we're dry more or less there's some little spots there sorry I've must with the brightness trying to get the camera to cooperate and it's just not working but uh you can still see we still have a little bit whenever it's like this so I lied we're not dry when it's like this let it dry the rest of the way and this is a message for future Vaughn as much as anybody Vaughn please for the love of everything just let the glue dry so again uh, like my impulse is that I know it'll be fine let it dry and then you can spritz it with some more you can do as many layers as you want so I actually think this is pretty good just as is um, that's the right level of shine that I'd like and I don't think we're gonna have to worry about any of our gears and stuff falling off you can also put like UV resin on this if you wanted like some little oh baby I hear you the cat wants out. <laughs> um, you can do little spots of UV resin if you want it to look like there's water droplets. And I'm actually going to go through and just join a couple more gears onto this before finishing it off with some like beadwork or chain or something. If you guys are interested in seeing more videos of how to finish jewelry, let me know down in the comments and uh, we'll see what we can get put together. But this is basically how it comes out. I'm really excited to see what y'all make with these kind of design ideas and techniques. So if you tag us on Instagram or post it to Facebook or anything like that, um, you'll be sure to tag us. That way we can see what you're up to. Up to. And uh, if you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, uh, consider joining our Craft Along Club. Um, or you can uh, also <laughs> join our free newsletter email list where we send out notifications every time we have a new tutorial, live stream, or shop update. Um, and you also get exclusive coupons and stuff. So I'm just getting lost in this, in this beautiful labradorite. <laughs> Alrighty, y'all. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I do hope this was helpful to you. And until next time, happy crafting. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>